I'm going to try to wing this video and I really want to talk about how a woman can bring a man down or help a man rise and I want specifically my grandsons to hear this message. I gave this message to my own son and it's a message that any wise woman would give her own son. And so there's a proverb about it and it says this, these are the words of King Lemuel, the burden, the words, the heavy burden that his mother had for him, that his mother taught him. Oh my son, oh my son of my womb, oh the son of my vows, don't give your strength to women and your ways to that which destroys kings. So I wanna talk about what that is. What is giving your strength to women? My gosh, have I known a lot of women whose hearts are bands, snares, and traps that men needed to escape from. There's a scripture about that. There's even one that says, don't trust that woman that's laying in your bosom because her heart's not with you. And so give not your strength unto women. Women that live to please themselves more than God are a nightmare for any man. And those women will take a man's strength and they'll be the same woman that has destroyed kings. And that woman that lives for pleasure, so I wanna talk about that for a minute too. Because God made us to love pleasure. The problem is when we, and to, and to give us pleasure, you know, there's pleasures evermore to those that love the Lord, right? So God's all about pleasure, or there wouldn't be a scripture about pleasures evermore, would there be? So God's not this mean guy in the sky that just wants to ruin our life and make sure we never have any pleasure. No, as a matter of fact, it's those pleasures that are out of order that become so destructive. And so I want to talk a, a bit about the woman that's alive to God's voice in her conscience and the one that's kind of dead to God's voice in her conscience because it's the difference between two dimensions. There's a dimension of darkness. Men, women love the power of darkness more than light. They don't come into the light because they don't care if their works are pleasing to God or not. So they don't talk, they don't tell, nothing. And those women are, are a horror on steroids. Men like that are that to a woman too. So being alive to God in your conscience is that little voice that says, uh, say you're sorry, ask for forgiveness, uh, do this, don't do that you know, make this right. Don't, you know, that little voice of God that's in all of our conscience, we were made in his image and he put a, a compass in us. So when a woman chucks off that comp compass to be a pleasure seeker, more than a lover of God, it's, it's all hell breaks loose. And so I've not only been that woman whose heart is bands and snares and traps that men need to escape from, I have known thousands of women in my lifetime <clears throat> and women that can't talk story are a super big problem to their sons their grandsons and any life they touch because they love being a pleasure seeker more than they love being a god pleaser i'm going to end this with proverbs 31 too so through the course of the time of my own life what i realized is that i got riches deceitfully and they made themselves wings and fly away. I'm gonna tell you what that means now too. A woman who gets a man, <clears throat> because the adulteress hunts for the precious life, a woman who's hunting a man to get what she needs from him because he has to play God, he has to fix her, save her, help her, and make sure that she does everything, gets everything she needs because she's dead in her conscience to God's voice. Wow, a man will end up serving that one, the enemies of that woman's soul till the day he dies, and I have seen men do it. Uh, especially guilty men, much easier to control. So men that don't have their own personal integrity or slight it for some reason are very, very easy for women to control. So the most important thing for this woman is that her son, she's telling her son to wake up to God's voice in your conscience and don't go down this road with women that are pleasure seekers more than God seekers. 
you know, don't give your strength to those women because they'll suck every ounce of blood you got out of you in a dimension of lust. So when you look at Satan and Satan's government as a, as a dimension of lust, taking, using, getting, gain, greedy, greedy, greedy for personal gain, that's what the dimension of Satan actually is. It's exactly what he suckered Adam and Eve into. Oh, blow off that voice of God in your conscience and live for pleasure. It's the same thing he did to Jesus in the desert. Make your God your belly, Jesus. I'll give you the whole world if you do. You know, live for your own pleasure. Live for the pleasures of the world. And take those conscience risks all the time. Blow off what God thinks and what he cares. Just take a risk. He'll catch you. Once saved, always saved. Jesus, jump off that building. God's obligated to catch you. So back to all the hundreds at least of stories I've heard, hundreds of women that did the very same thing I did. They blew off God's voice in their conscience and they went us seducing after men to save them, fix them, help them and be God for them and get everything they need from them. Calgon, take me away. You know, women that are actually looking to gain from a man, not to give to a man. And man, you know, there's a lot of scriptures about those kind of women. They're numerous, you know, a woman who lives in a house of strife because there's the voice of God isn't happening in people's consciences. You know, it's, it says it's better to live in a house of peace with crumbs than a, than a house of strife and contention. And there's so many scriptures about the horrors of a woman whose God is her belly you know, who loves to eat her raisin cakes, who, who is brutish, you know, odious. You should look up those scriptures sometime. And, you know, I, I realize I'm a woman talking to women. I've, I, I know what it's like to be a woman of the flesh. So there's a huge warning here about being a woman of the flesh. And so a lot of women I've met, you know, pining away, they're bitter, they're offended, they're bearing grudges. Look what this man did to me. This is so horrible, you know. Uh, vengeful, you know, one woman unscrewed all of a man's tools, you know. Uh, the, the acts of vengeance are numerous towards men. I mean, we even let somebody live in our house who, who sh was shooting her gun, you know, a man, a married man that she was sleeping with down the road. She, she opened up the door and just started unloading on the guy. And I know a woman who had a knife to her chest sticking up, <laughs> you know, ready to not uh, slay her husband that was having an affair, right? Women get very, jealousy is the rage of a man or a woman and who can stand before jealousy. I'm not gonna get what I need, I kill. Yeah, right, it, it, the horror shows are numerous. So I've met women that picked up some guy in a bar, that picked up some guy in a party. They never tell themselves the truth about how, how did this originate, this, uh, this house built on the sand again. And have you ever read the scripture that says what God has joined together? Let no man cut in half. <clears throat> what we put together in the kingdom of lust is just a dark work. It's an Ishmael. It's a do our own thing, our own way work. And then, and then women get so bitter, critical, and offended and join 50 prayer groups to have all kinds of women pray in their husband back into their bed with them, you know, and don't even see the insanity of it. Why not just repent for the work you did with your own hands in the dimension of lust? Some women have faced this, and my gosh, are those women wise? They, they, they're acting out the end of Proverbs 31 instead of the first part. So... I've been, tomorrow I will have been married to Gene 37 years. And I've, I, I knew him for a year before we ever got married. And one thing I decided to do differently was to not gain riches deceitfully. I wasn't going to not tell him who I was, where I'd been, what I'd done, um, what I got saved from. Uh, I was going to go into a relationship telling the truth and continuing to tell the truth to him over and over and over again. I mean, I haven't liked to hurt his feelings, and a lot of telling him the truth has been my perception, which I'm sure has hurt his feelings, but because my perception has been a little skewed by my past over the years. So, you know, 
But I decided I was never going to lie to him. I was always going to speak the truth. And, and I've tried to do it in love <laughs> and not in rage and anger and malice and hatred. And, you know, That doesn't work to help a relationship very much, but it's just been heaven on earth. I mean, we've had struggles. We've had divisions, schisms, evil imaginations, probably me much more than him. But the, the Lord always wins the battles because deep inside, we both fear the Lord and we don't want to be selfish. So it's kind of been living like a, on a honeymoon for 37 years. Even before that, it was there was just so much joy because we actually um, had made God's judgments our delight. So we weren't perishing in our affliction, both of us. First time I'd ever actually even known a man that really was alive to the voice of God in his conscience and not making a woman pay for what was doing she was doing wrong. So he was actually able to help me hurdle a lot of really serious issues. And I wanna say, thank God for bringing a man of God. I mean, I'm so thankful to not have to be a man's conscience. That in itself is a huge relief. Most women are playing the part of a man's conscience and that, that's hell on earth. And it's sad for the men that have to do that for a woman, too. So that's kind of what I'm saying here to my grandsons. I have, I was going to count, uh, four, five, six, seven. I have seven natural grandsons. So this, real, this message is really to them. To wake up to God's voice in your own conscience because you'll pick a woman just like you. And I was talking to a, a friend from Hawaii, a little, little Hawaiian girl. Now she's older, she's a pilot. She's, you know, she's done a lot with her life, you know. I think she's had problems with men. But, you know, I was talking to her about the compromise of our own soul. And she goes, you know what they call that in Hawaii? They call it water level. That if your water level is low in your own conscience towards God, you'll pick somebody just like you. And that's, it, there's even a, uh, a scripture that says that, that I don't remember. I was looking up a lot of scriptures when I was looking for the one that, you know, don't trust the woman that lays in your bosom. I was, I, I read some scripture that, yeah, selfish men get selfish women that love pleasure more than God to beat the crap out of them so they'll change. It, the, the scripture basically said that. <laughs> Hmm, there, there's some enlightenment. Maybe the woman you got is something that you deserve. That's really what I saw. I met a man that didn't have too much going for him in hearing God's voice and doing it. Sad part is we went through Christian counseling with the Catholic Church and had three priests at our wedding. And we were so far from God, it's not even funny. Because we were going through the traditions of men, but it was... The secrets of our heart, forget that. You know, what we were doing inwardly in our thoughts and our hearts and our motivation. These, these so-called priests, pastors didn't have a clue what was actually going on in us because they weren't living that way either. It's tr the tragedy of going to Bible school because you can learn all the right things to do and never realize that God knows what you're thinking and God knows what's motivating for you, what, what's motivating you, and you're going to get rewarded according to what you do secretly. So a lot of people have many sorrows, many troubles, much despair, much tribulation, and don't realize that it's even at their own hand because of what they do secretly, because they look down on people, they mock, they scorn, they hate, they despise. They're mad, women that make their kids serve their happiness, make their husbands serve their happiness, and addicts. You know, once you turn down the volume on the voice of God in your conscience, welcome to the world of lust and addiction out of control pleasure and god do i wish i could save every one of my grandsons from a woman whose heart is bands and t snares and traps and those are the women you need to escape from because you know what a man a woman who makes a man god does she makes him serve her fear and her control and her unbelief and it's hell on earth and man, I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you the numerous, numerous women I've met. Stories, unbelievable stories that people that have never judged their life by their experiment. So they, there's no warning. I mean, I know all kinds of women that couldn't help their sons or their grandsons or never helped their own daughters and never had could talk story. There was no warning in them about, my gosh, 
turn on turn up the volume as loud as you can on God's voice in your conscience. Don't accuse people. Don't excuse yourself. Make it about you and God's voice. And you know, you'll ride the high places of the earth and you'll be able to help people because that's the only problem people have. They turn down the volume on the voice of God and they accuse and excuse and they go into the dimension of darkness, of lust, of the lust of the flesh, which take people out. And and it's, it's just so sad because most people don't even understand what makes them go down. They're too busy accusing other people and excusing themselves to understand that they made the devil their father, the liar, you know, following the voice of the flesh, the, the flesh that's a raging war, it says, with the spirit. So I'm going to end it with this because I, 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 I thought about thousands of stories I could say about women that never told themselves the truth about nothing, and they never had any warning. But I think I'm, I was going to tell them a couple, but this is already long, long. And I just want to tell my little grandsons what a wise woman does, because that's at the end here. Her husband safely trusted her, because when they have marriage problems, she's not sniffing up at the wind, looking for another Calgon man to save her, and another knight in shining armor to fix her, save her, help her, and give her everything she wants. Uh, the noble woman, her, the one who fears the Lord, who has the voice of God turned on in her conscience, her husband can trust her. She's not going to harm him. Everything she does and says will be for her own, for his own good and the good of their relationship. So he can trust in her because it's not about her own self-pleasure and her own self-happiness. And so she, she gets wool and flax. What is that? Food? She gets clothing, words of God, words of life, the words of life that matter. She gets those kind of clothes and she works with her hand. She digs into the issues of life that come from the heart and she gets words. She stirs herself up to see God and she needs his words more than her necessary food. She's like a ship that goes the distance to get food from afar, food from the king of king instead of the king of lust. She rises while it's night. She gives food to her maidens. She's feeding women with wisdom and understanding and knowledge everywhere she goes to help them out of the snare of the devil. And she's constantly checking everything out, the price of everything, counting the cost of everything carnally and spiritually so she can do whatever she can to spare anybody that walks into her life. She stretches out her hands. She works willingly. She opens her heart to women that are just poor poor spiritually more than anything. I mean, we don't live in a poor country. Or I'd probably say that poverty is not that we don't help poor people. We do. But women that are needy because they're, they're bitter, they're vengeful, they're offended. She helps them try to say, now, where did you catch that man again? Tell me that story again, because maybe you blew off God's voice in your conscience and you've been mad as you know what at God and man. And you shouldn't be mad because you're just You've eaten the fruit of your own ways and you've made your bed and now you're laying in it. You know, they walk in the light of their own sparks. They make a bed of, of sorrow. So this goes on and it says a lot of great things here. Uh, she opens her mouth with wisdom and instruction is on her tongue. She doesn't eat the bread of, I don't know, she's not a sleepwalker. Women who live for pleasure are dead. They're sleepwalkers. She's not one of those women. Uh, her children rise up and call her blessed because she's always helping them choose the blessing and not the curse. Her husband is praising her as well. And you know, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who turns up the volume of God on her conscience and teaches other people to do that will be the light that shines brighter and brighter and people will be so thankful for somebody that has some sane judgment, judgment to save and not condemn. People that see it, I'm telling you what, it is so exciting to not only have given myself to women, but see them understand what I've been saying about all of this for years, to be warners, warn, count the cost. Count the cost, my dear grandsons, please count the cost. Don't turn out down God's voice in your conscience and don't pick somebody that does because 
a bed of sorrow will be yours. And God, I wish I could help all my grandchildren and spare them from that. Amen.